when I started this channel back in 2018, never in my wildest dreams did I think I would have a tourbillon powered watch in for review. Largely because I probably didn't even know what a tourbillon powered watch was back then. But these are crazy times, so buckle up because today we're going to be jumping straight into the deep end of high horology timepieces, talking about the king of complications in the tourbillon movement. And not just any tourbillon movement, this is a central tourbillon that features a five day power reserve powered by four mainspring barrels. This thing is insane. Today we're taking a look at the black hole from Peacock Watches. Hey guys, welcome back to Just The Watch. My name's Dave, I live in Japan, and I love to collect affordable watches, which again is a big reason why I never would have thought to have a tourbillon powered watch on the channel because affordable and tourbillon just don't go together. If you don't know what a tourbillon is, don't worry, we're gonna get into all of that in this review, but essentially it's a watchmaker's flex. When a watchmaker wants to show off, when they want to announce to the world that they're ready to play with the big boys, they go out and they make a tourbillon. In modern watches, it doesn't really serve a purpose, but they're really hard to make and they look super cool. And because they're so hard to make, they also tend to cost a lot of money. For years, the Swiss watch industry was able to make the claim that only their master craftsmen could create a tourbillon, and that's why you needed to spend tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars to get one. But working quietly and diligently in their shadows, Chinese watchmakers like Peacock have been playing catch up to the point that they're now able to produce movements that are every bit as impressive as their Swiss counterparts at a fraction of the cost. This is the story over and over and over again when it comes to the Chinese watch industry, and even the area of high horology is not exempt from this. Peacock is offering this watch at a price of around $3,500. To get a comparably equipped Swiss watch, you're probably looking at spending at least $50,000. Now, I have a lot to say about this watch, so I want to jump into it as quickly as possible, but first, two things. Number one, this watch was given to me by Peacock to facilitate this review, which is why you saw the paid promotions flag at the beginning of this video. However, beyond the watch itself, I did not receive any additional compensation, nor did Peacock have any control over the content of this review. And to underscore that last point a little bit, I'm going to begin by pointing out this watch's biggest flaw by far. I shot a lot of macro footage for this review because the tourbillon is amazing and it looks great close up. But in doing so, I did discover quite a bit of dust underneath the glass in this watch, which is a huge disappointment. And after doing a lot of research, I don't think this is indicative of Peacock's normal quality control, but I can only judge the watch that they sent in. And you're going to notice it yourself anyways when you see the footage of the watch. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump in and take a closer look at this watch because on pretty much every other level, this thing is incredible. If a tourbillon is a watchmaker's flex, then the movement itself is going to tell you a lot about the prowess of the watchmaker. And my goodness is Peacock putting on a pretty amazing display of watchmaking prowess in this movement. But before we jump into all that, I think it is helpful to review the history of Peacock watches and get a feel for how they were able to come to this point in being able to create this kind of a movement. Back in the mid-1950s, the Chinese government decided it would be advantageous to have a watchmaking industry, so they quickly got to work on figuring out how to produce watch movements. And by 1958, they had established eight factories throughout China to begin producing Chinese-made wristwatches. And one of these original eight factories was the Liaoning Watch Factory, which would eventually go on to establish the Peacock brand of watches as a luxury Chinese watch. Throughout their roughly 70 years of history, they've been responsible for a lot of innovations in the Chinese watchmaking industry, particularly on the movement side. And while they have had some ups and downs throughout their 70 year history, they have been continuously producing watches and movements since 1957. But in 2009, they were bought out by an investment group that sought to revitalize the brand with a primary focus of creating high quality watch movements, but also producing watches under the Peacock brand that again, tend to 
trend into the luxury watch territory. And so when it comes to producing their own watches, it seems like oftentimes the watches that they do make are kind of showcases for these high-end movements. They have been making a number of tourbillon watches, including this black hole tourbillon, which is what we're looking at today. One of the things that I thought was interesting is that there have been some reports that Peacock is actually manufacturing parts for Swiss-made tourbillon watches as well. And this is kind of a controversial issue when it comes to Swiss watches, which is why I think this report is still unsubstantiated. But Swiss made label requirements do allow for parts to be manufactured outside of Switzerland. So it wouldn't really be that surprising if these reports were true. And if so, it really would speak to the quality of the movements that Peacock is producing. Well, the most basic Swiss tourbillon watches are going to start at around $10,000 and go way up from there. Peacock has produced a much more advanced tourbillon movement featuring a central tourbillon mechanism while also incorporating four mainspring barrels to give it a full five days of power reserve. To get a movement like this from a Swiss manufacturer, you're probably looking at a watch that's going to cost you around $50,000 at the entry level, which makes Peacock's $3,500 asking price a pretty astounding bargain by comparison. Now, let me clarify that a little bit. I'm not saying that this watch is the equivalent of a $50,000 Swiss luxury watch. Just that if you were going to get a Swiss watch with a central tourbillon and four barrels with a five-day power reserve, you would probably have to spend $50,000 or more on it. But if you were going to get a watch with this kind of a movement inside of it from a Swiss watchmaker, you would also get far better finishing and a more elegant and refined overall design. The finishing in particular on this watch is nowhere near what you would find from a Swiss luxury watch. And I'm not just talking about the dust that's under the crystal here. At macro, you can see that the finishing on the individual components of the movement is a little bit rough. And this is something you would pretty much never notice with the naked eye, but it's also the level of finishing that no Swiss watch brand would likely ever let out of their factory. And so from a value standpoint, that makes this watch from China a very interesting proposition it's not giving you the equivalent of a Swiss luxury watch with a high horology movement inside of it for a lower price. It's giving you a mixture of high horology features like the engineering and the movement that goes into it with a lower level of finishing on the movement and the watch overall that's more comparable to what you'd find in affordable micro brands. The Peacock Black Hole is clearly a showcase for the brand, highlighting their ability to create some of the most advanced watch movements in the world while showcasing that movement inside an artistically designed and thematically interesting watch. There is nothing ordinary or subtle about this watch. It is clearly meant to be an attention-getting showcase. And as a showcase, I think this design works really well. But before we go any further, let's talk about the center of this design, which is that tourbillon movement. What is it that makes the tourbillon so special? To put it simply, they're very difficult to make and they look really cool. It really is that simple. It's a way for a watchmaker to show off their engineering prowess. Now, when the tourbillon was invented back in 1795 by legendary watchmaker Abraham Louis Breguet, it had a very practical purpose that greatly increased the accuracy of pocket watches. That's right, the tourbillon was invented specifically with pocket watches in mind, and when you put that complication into a wristwatch, it doesn't really function in the same way that it does in a pocket watch. To understand what a tourbillon does, you do need to have a little bit of an understanding on how a mechanical watch movement works. At the heart of any mechanical or automatic watch is the escapement. This is the part of a watch movement that essentially is responsible for keeping track of accurate time. The escapement gives consistent impulses that control the gear train of the watch, which in turn drives the hands. And in the case of a mechanical or automatic watch, it uses a hairspring to control these impulses and to ensure that they are consistent. In a standard watch movement, the escapement is fixed on a single axis. If you've ever seen a watch with an open heart dial, you can see that escapement beating inside there. It bounces back and forth, but it doesn't rotate. By contrast, within a tourbillon movement, the escapement is elaborately engineered so that it is constantly rotating within the watch movement itself. The purpose of this rotation in a tourbillon watch is to counteract the effects of gravity on the escapement. And this is why it's only effective in a pocket watch, because a pocket watch is almost always stored in a vertical position. 
usually in somebody's pocket. And as such, the force of gravity is going to be constantly tugging on that escapement in a single direction, which causes the movement to be less accurate. But if you can make the escapement rotate vertically within the watch, that will counteract those effects of gravity. And it worked. The tourbillon became a very important and very popular complication because it affected the accuracy of watches in such a positive way. At least until people switched from pocket watches to wrist watches, because if you think about a wrist watch, it doesn't just hang in a vertical position all the time. The natural movements of your wrist throughout the day effectively accomplish the exact same thing as a tourbillon by moving the escapement in different orientations in relation to gravity. So as soon as wrist watches replaced pocket watches, there wasn't really any more functional need for a tourbillon. So they kind of went away. But then something interesting happened in the late 60s. The quartz revolution essentially made mechanical watches obsolete as well. Once quartz watches came out, there wasn't really any need for a mechanical watch movement anymore. But it turns out people still wanted them because people still find mechanical watches very cool. They're marvels of engineering and pieces of past history. There's this sort of romantic, nostalgic feeling attached to the idea of a craftsman assembling a watch movement from gears and springs, producing a beautiful and complicated machine that can be worn on your wrist. And arguably one of the pinnacles of mechanical watchmaking was the tourbillon movement. And so tourbillon watches, with their incredible complexity and beauty that's inherent in the design, became the watchmaker's flex that they are today. Up until a few years ago, Swiss watchmakers essentially had exclusive claim to the ability to craft a tourbillon watch. And based on that exclusivity, they charged insanely high prices for these watches. Again, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars at the very low end. But Chinese watchmaking has made some incredibly impressive gains in the past few years to the point that they're now going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best watchmakers in the Swiss watch industry and producing some incredibly impressive watch movements for a fraction of what the Swiss are asking. And that's precisely the draw of this watch here. This is by far the most technically impressive watch movement that I've ever seen. I have been aware of Chinese tourbillon movements being used in a lot of watches in around the $1,000 price range, which is in itself an impressive feat, but the movement on this Peacock watch is on a completely different level. For one, this features a central tourbillon display. On most watches, you're going to find the tourbillon off axis, usually down at around 6 o'clock. Moving it to the center of the movement introduces additional complication. And the fact that Peacock has the watchmaking capability to engineer it into the center of their movement further drives home what makes this movement so special. But they didn't stop there. They also gave this movement a five-day power reserve. So this is a hand-wound watch as opposed to an automatic watch, so you will need to wind the watch manually. However, the movement incorporates four mainspring barrels, allowing the watch to have a full five days of power reserve. Typically, a watch will only have one mainspring barrel. That's essentially what gives the watch its power. It's the thing that you wind when you wind the watch. So by designing a watch movement with four of those, you're obviously increasing the total amount of power that can be stored in the watch. But that's not the only thing that was necessary to get the power reserve up to a full five days. Tourbillon movements require even more power than a traditional movement because they have to constantly rotate the escapement cage. So another technical innovation here is the use of a titanium alloy on that cage to make it even lighter, thus making it easier to rotate and increasing the power reserve. The result is an impressive display of mechanical engineering, which is put on full display with that open central tourbillon putting on a mesmerizing display. Now, having an open tourbillon in the center of your movement is going to necessitate an interesting and unique watch design to support that. Peacock decided to go with the theme of a black hole and use that as inspiration for the design of this watch. So you have that mesmerizing rotating tourbillon in the middle kind of representing the black hole itself. And then the handset is kind of meant to look like the event horizon of a black hole. And one of the results of this design is that this watch is not that easy to read at a glance. It's not terrible, but legibility is obviously not a strong point or even the main consideration in this design. This is more like a piece of mechanical art that also happens to accurately tell the time. The hours are represented by a small arrow pointing to that little hour track on the dial. 
Well, the minute hand is the loomed portion of those wings on the side that kind of represent the event horizon of the black hole. So the central tourbillon rotates once per minute, kind of functioning as a second hand. Well, those big wings will make their rotation once per an hour like a typical minute hand. Moving outward a bit, you have a carbon fiber ring that kind of makes up what would be the dial of the watch. The carbon fiber here is infused with a pigment that kind of produces a nebula-like pattern. And there are a few different colors available. I got the blue version here. And it's worth noting that that nebula pattern is loomed. It does glow in the dark, but it is very faint. I like the idea here. It kind of fits in the whole space theme of the watch. But unless you give it a very strong hit with a UV torch, you're probably not ever going to really notice it. Thankfully, that ring housing the 12-hour markers and the hour and minute hand both have a better application of loom, giving it some practicality after dark and a little bit more interest. But even those elements are kind of lacking in longevity. Another really impressive part of this design is the massive sapphire crystal that effectively takes up the upper half of the watch. I've never seen a crystal that rises this high and wraps around the whole movement like this, but it looks great in this design. The lower half of the case is made out of 904L stainless steel that does have some nice brushing and polishing on it. Turning the watch over, you'll see a sapphire case back, which allows you to see the back of the movement. And while the center portion is skeletonized to give you a clear view into the tourbillon, the rest of the movement is obscured by a solid bridge that does have a nice finish to it, but it would have been fun to see a little bit more of the movement back here. On the wrist, it's a lot more comfortable than you might expect given that this watch has a very large 46 millimeter diameter, but this is offset by the lugless design in which the strap integrates directly into the case of the watch and the fact that they have paired a very comfortable rubber strap with this watch, which is secured by a very high quality and smoothly functioning deployant clasp. And while the design makes this watch look pretty thick, it's actually only about 13 millimeters, so it's really not that bad. So wearing experience is quite good. You're getting a ton of wrist presence and visual impact in a surprisingly comfortable package. Okay, let's finish this off with some of the things I didn't like about this watch. I mentioned the biggest problem in the intro. I was pretty disappointed to see the amount of dust that was under the crystal of this watch. Everything else about this watch is so impressive and so clearly meant to be a showcase for Peacock and for Chinese watchmaking in general. And unfortunately, a slip up like this in quality control really kind of pulls the rug out from under them. I did a lot of research on Peacock watches and even saw some other reviews of this particular watch. Nobody else mentioned dust like this, so I'm hoping that this is just kind of a one-off. But I can only review the watch that they sent me, and that was a problem here. My other complaints are much more minor. Something that I found to be odd is that the mechanical hand winding function doesn't have any kind of a stop at the end of it. On most mechanical watches, you can feel when it's fully wound, but in this case, I'm guessing because they have four interconnected barrels, it actually winds similar to an automatic watch and that you can just keep winding it forever. Now this does protect the movement, which is a good thing, but because the watch has such a large power reserve, it's hard to know how much you're supposed to wind it for to get that full five days of power reserve. I don't know if it would have been too much to ask that they also add on a power reserve indicator onto this already very complicated movement, but that would have been nice. Beyond that, your considerations are gonna be whether or not this design is something that speaks to you and whether or not you're interested in spending $3,500 on a Chinese tourbillon watch. For me personally, this isn't something that I would buy, but then I probably wouldn't buy any tourbillon watch. I find them absolutely mesmerizing and very interesting, but it's just not typically the kind of thing I would spend my money on. But if you are interested in a tourbillon watch and this is within your price range, it's definitely a very interesting one to check out. I'm not just impressed at what Peacock has been able to do with this movement. I'm kind of blown away. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today. Drop me a comment down below because there's a lot that we covered here and there's so much to talk about when it comes to high horology timepieces in the affordable realm. Again, I know this is not an affordable watch, but then again, when it comes to tourbillon watches, it kind of is. And I would especially love to hear if anybody has any particular experience with Peacock watches, if you've seen similar problems with quality control, or if yours has been in a better condition than the one that I got. 
I would love to get some opinions from other people who have owned Peacock watches because they're kind of just breaking into the Western market, I think. So even though they have a long history in China, they're not that well known outside of China. So I'd love to get as much information as I could. Anyways, this video has gone on too long already, so that'll wrap it up for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.